Hello and welcome back to Liverpool Transfer Daily. Here on the Blood Red channel, I'm your host Edward Kane. I'm once again joined by Emmett Gates and today we are going to be discussing all the goings on at Liverpool, the transfer rumours and might do a little bit of Wolves preview for you as well. But we're going to start with uh, Liverpool, surprise, surprise, being linked with the midfielder, Emmett. It's uh, Kouadio Manu Kone of uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's a defensive midfielder. Um, do you think he's the sort of player that the Reds are seriously considering going in for? I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thing about it is, is that because of the predicament Liverpool are in, you know, we've we've seen Liverpool linked with 20 different midfielders, you know, since the summer until now. Um, and, you know, Kone is he's just one of the he's the latest uh, the latest nut person to be linked. Um I mean, I don't know a whole lot about him, but just from the bits I've seen of him, he looks like a, a pretty physical, dynamic midfielder, which is something Liverpool really lack. Um I wrote a piece yesterday because they've been linked with uh, Tenu Cook Miners from Atlanta. And essentially I wrote a piece on Liverpool.com saying that the last thing Liverpool need is probably arguably another technical midfielder. They need someone like a genie, a genie, someone in a genie Ronaldo mold or a replacement for Ronaldo because frankly Liverpool never actually bought a replacement for Ronaldo. So the last thing the club need is another technical, nimble midfielder. Um, it kind of harks back to what Jimmy Jarger said on Sky Sports um, in the aftermath of the 3-1 defeat to Brentford when he said basically that Liverpool's midfield is starting to look like Arsenal's midfield after Arsenal had won everything. And there were, you know, you had Santi Carzola and Cesc Fabregas and Thomas Fuzicki. And it was very, it was very nice and it was very nimble and very technical, but there wasn't much muscle there. Um, and I think... If Liverpool were to buy Cook Miners, he'd be the same type of player as, you know, Thiago or Harvey Elliott. Very good on the ball, but he's not very physical. So I think Kone from Borussia Mönchengladbach would be more a Genie one Alden type. So I'd be more, you know, it would make more sense to me to buy him than, say, Cook Miners or, you know, whoever else they've been linked with in this transfer window. Because um, a lot of them do seem to be technical type Midfielders, as opposed to you know, a bit of dynamism, a bit of physicality, which is what Liverpool really need. Um, but for the bits I've seen of him, yeah, he looks promising. And I mean, his price isn't that you know, according to transfer market, he's valued at about 25 million euros. No doubt, if Liverpool come calling, that'll be about three times as much. <laughs> but and his contract only has another two and a half years to run, um, and he's very young, so yeah, all the signs point to it would be a shrewd signing by Liverpool if they were to, to make an approach. Yeah, as you say, Liverpool probably in a bit of a position now where whichever midfielders we do go for, everybody's around the world's aware of the issue. So probably going to end up getting overcharged no matter who we go for. So might be better off going for a relative unknown in, in Kone as opposed to, you know, the likes of Barella and, well, obviously we'll talk about Bellingham. But yeah. um, I wanted to bring you back to Carragher's comments on Sky about that, um, you know, the difference between the technical and the pressing midfield. Do you think that's been a conscious change by Klopp or do you think it's sort of been forced on him in the personnel that he's got available and having only really bought one midfielder over the last four years or so and obviously it was Thiago who is a very technical player? Yeah, I don't know if it's maybe a combination of the two. Um, I think, I do think the signing of Thiago in itself was kind of maybe a statement in that he was looking to take Liverpool in a different direction. Um, but... I think maybe the fact that when Alden left and he wasn't replaced, maybe points to signs that you know it was maybe decisions that were made above his head. Um, I think that the right combination is a blend of both. If you had when Alden and Thiago plus Fabinho, I think you know you let Thiago do all the technical work, let Fabinho Fabinho do what Fabinho does, and when Alden's the box to box marauder, you know he's the physicality, and you know Liverpool can still press. But I think there's too many of Thiago now, Thiago types, and they're not as good as Thiago. Jordan Henderson's aged. Fabinho now has a couple of miles on the clock. So, you know, it, it, it's hard to it's hard to debate whether you know these changes were forced on Jurgen Klopp or it's a conscious decision that he made to maybe make Liverpool less predictable, maybe change things up. I don't really know, but I think it's maybe the pendulum has swung too far 
in the technical direction. I think the the right blend is both. You know, you have that physicality matched with you know the technical finesse of Thiago. But I do think when you look at Liverpool's midfield now, they have too many technical players. You you would even say Naby Keita is a technical player. He has a bit of physicality, but he's more about what he can do on the ball. You've already Elliott, you've Thiago, Jordan Henderson can be pretty technical. You know, Fabio Carvalho, um, Curtis Jones, you'd say is more technical than physical. So I do think, yeah, the pendulum has swung very much the other direction. And I think the way to change that is finding, you know, the sweet spot in the middle. Um, we maybe bring in a couple of physical players and Jude Bellingham would probably, you know, be a good answer to that. Nicolo Barella can do both. So it's, I think it's just a matter of, you know, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool trying to correct that uh, of what they've done over the last three, four summers and bring in a couple of midfielders and make sure that they are physical. Yeah, as you say, that pendulum sort of swung so far in in the technical direction now that it, it looks like it is going to take some significant investment in that midfield to get it back to the pressing monster that it once was. And I think I think you make a good point there. If you had an, an 18, 19 Wijnaldum alongside, you know, Fabinho over the last two years and Thiago now, I think that would be a pretty ideal Liverpool midfield, wouldn't it? But we'll uh we'll move on to rumors of some outgoings. Um Obviously, Liverpool brought in Cody Gakpo, who can play in the false nine position, did so for the Netherlands in the World Cup. And for Roberto Firmino being in the last year of his contract, he is now free to talk to clubs that are interested from overseas. And I can't imagine there's going to be any shortage of suitors with what he's done for Liverpool over the years. The people being linked to most recently, Bayern Munich. How, uh, how much stock would you put into that one, Emmett? I mean, it's an interesting one um, in the sense that Firmino obviously has a lot of credit in the bank. In the Bundesliga, obviously, he was there with Hoffenheim, you know, before he joined Liverpool. And Bayern are very shrewd operators in the transfer market. And, you know, signing someone like Firmino on a free, I can see Bayern going for that. And, I mean, he's only going to be, what, 31 by the start of next summer? 30? Um, So, and considering he's a player that was always, to me, Firmino was always... Out of the Mane, Salah, Firmino, you know, trio, Firmino was always the more intelligent one, the more the one that you could say he uses brain more, the more his legs go. And I think he can still operate at the highest level and he can just, you know, manipulate space better, know when to run, when not to run. And I think he will last longer at the top because to me he was always the more intelligent player. So I do see someone like Byron or a big club coming in for him. I don't think he's anywhere near finished at the age of 30 or 31. Um, especially if you know whatever team he joins, if they use a number ten, he can slot in that role very easy, or even a false nine. And um, he doesn't have the legs anymore, but he can still you know assist. He can still chip in with you know we even saw last season for Liverpool, he hardly really kicked the ball, but he still got into double figures. You know when he was making late cameos off the bench, fifteen minutes here, twenty minutes there, he still scored a lot of goals. So I do think Firmino still has a lot to offer at this point. Um, and I, I could see you maybe going back to the Bundesliga just because of what he did with Hoffenheim in the past. Yeah, I completely agree. I think he's got a lot to offer. And I think I think he showed that um, in the early parts of this season. You know, I, I spoke on a podcast before the start of the season and I, I thought he was one of the players that maybe would be let go when his contract ends. But I think now, personally, Jurgen Klopp's spoken in press conferences about wanting to keep him, having still signed Cody Gakpo. I'd be surprised. I think I'd be a bit disappointed if he didn't get at least, you know, another year deal at Liverpool. What do you reckon? Yeah, I, I don't see any any harm in it. Um, like, and, and the beauty about from having Farino is, uh, like, and we saw this, as you say, earlier in the season when Luis Diaz was injured. Clap shifted to a, a 4-3-1-2 and put Firmino, you know, as the number 10 in behind Salah and Nunez. So if you keep Firmino, you always have that option. You know, I think Liverpool kind of over the last maybe year become slightly predictable. Um, which is something Carlo Ancelotti talked about in, after the Champions League final. So I think the more formations that Klopp can shift to, you know, plan A doesn't work, go to plan B, and if plan B doesn't work, go to plan C. If you have Firmino there, you can easily shift to that formation and use Firmino in a hole. So it gives Klopp more aces up his sleeve, which is never a bad thing, in my opinion. So, yeah, if if, if it was an answer for Firmino signed a, a one-year you know extension contract, I'd be happy with that. I'd be like, yeah, keep him. Because you know what you're going to get, and he's always going to produce on the field. You know, it might be a moment of brilliance 
setting up for someone else or he get on the on the score sheet himself. So I, I think that you know keeping Firmino would definitely be a win win for all concerned. Yeah, I, I personally I think we've we've missed him since coming back from the World Cup a little bit. We've missed his you know his, his versatility and his, his diligence working and pressing in that front three. Obviously, I think he picked up a bit of a calf problem while we were away in Dubai. Um, but hopefully, the man I mentioned earlier in the false nine, Cody Yakpo, hopefully we'll be seeing his debut tomorrow in the FA Cup against Wolves. Um, but that is all we've got time for today on Liverpool Transfer Daily. So, Emmett, thanks for joining me and we'll catch you next time.